So hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to um, today's Best of Evo. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and um, I will be walking you through our first session. This is a computer-assisted language learning intersection and electronic village for 2022 and the Best of Evo. Our session, our first session, is called Videos for Mobile Learning or Mobile-Based Video Learning. Uh, this is a photo of a high school, a grade 10 high school class, a um, very special class. I think there were over 40, about 42 uh, students in the class. And I didn't want to have the regular class with uh, students sitting one behind the other. So we had them around in a circle. As you can see, uh, the boys are on the left and most of the girls were on the right. There were more boys than girls for some reason. I think it was a computer class that was their major. And um, I decided to use smartphones. You can see the kind of smartphones they're using. Uh, this was around 2008, uh, maybe earlier than that. And uh, the smartphones weren't as smart as they are today. But nonetheless, they were very happy with them. And um, first lesson, I asked them to, they have their books on their desk. I said, well, we're not going to use the books uh, the way you think we're going to use them. Um, let me know if you have smartphones, please. And they weren't allowed to have their smartphones in the classroom. I asked them, okay, smartphones up. And, uh, and that's how we started. You can see that they were laughing. They thought it was hilarious that the teacher suggested using smartphones in the classroom. But that's how we started. And um, thank you, Sonia. And um, this session, it's the first year that uh, we're doing this session. The idea was to help teachers teach students of various ages, how to create video tutorials using their smartphones in and out of the classroom. Uh, the idea, of course, was to engage students in language learning, so the activities related to language learning. This is an overview of uh, video-based mobile learning, but mostly smartphones. And uh, the link is down there. Um, if someone can share the link in the uh, chat room, please do. If not, I'll share it later so that you can uh, access not only the uh, presentation, but also go into the actual session, which was on a Moodle platform. You can go in as a guest and view the activities and see what's available, including the reading. These were the tools, the recorders, the screen recorders that the participants used and uh, passed on to their students to use with their phones. These are also uh, desktop. You can use them on the cloud in your browser window, on your computer, as well as on your smartphone and, of course, other um, mobile devices. Loom is limited, of course, uh, I think to 10 minutes. Edpuzzle, you can screen share and create a video with that. Screencast-O-Matic, Screen Recorder, Screen Capture, uh, Screencastify, Awesome Screen Recorder, TechSmith Capture, which is Jing, the old Jing, Flipgrid, Vimeo, Padlet. You can now uh, use Padlet to create a video screen. Uh, and ScreenPal, which is completely new from uh, screencast matic The only one that's unlimited, you can have as much time as you want uh, on your video is Vimeo. The other ones are limited for the free version. Of course, the paid versions are not. A little bit about me, you can read it when you look at the slides. I'm not going to go through that to save time. Um, Surashana, I don't know if Surashana is here. Uh, Sanya, is she here? Uh, Surashana was one of the um, volunteers who co-moderated the session with me. There were three of us, and it really helped in um, 
making sure that all the participants got their support. The other one was Cynthia, who had taken the uh, session before, not in EVO, but in another uh, course that I'd given using the same um, based session. Uh, she's from Colombia. Sudarshana is from India. I don't know if Cynthia is here. I, ca I can't either. see Sudarshana. Oh. I think she's not um, here. No, Let no, no, they're sign. not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, the participants, there were 74 participants from 29 countries. You can see the various countries. These are participants who actually added their country. On the Moodle site, you can either add your country or not, it's up to you. But I presume there were other countries as well uh, from participants who didn't add them. Uh, the progress, uh, each participant was able to see their progress. Uh, and see what activity they needed to complete in order to qualify for the final certificate, the EVO certificate, and uh, the digital badges that they received for each week. You can see that the uh, progress, if you get 100, means that you've completed all the tasks, and it's all um, baby blue. And if not, you'll see the royal blue. And once you click on any of these, uh, it'll take you to the activity that you need to complete. Um, I think that uh, the participants can tell you what they thought of the session. Uh, just let me know if you could hear that because I'm not sure what I added. The well, let me check to make sure that I added uh, computer sound. Okay, now you'll be able to hear it. Now, this is done on Voki. I um, allowed the participants to have 90 minutes using my um, account. They were students in a classroom and uh, they added either their own voices or the avatar's voice. So here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you, moderators, for this wonderful course. I am Sadhaka from India. I learned many new things from this course. Novio is one of them. Making cahoots and involving learners in it is really an interesting thing for me. Storyboard, Pixton, Plotagon are very interesting. I enjoyed making stories on them. I found that this course is really helpful to develop collaboration and interest of learners. Thank you. I enjoyed and benefited greatly from this course for three reasons. One, it made me rethink the value of smartphones for language learning. Two, it got me trying out new tools that I may not have otherwise. And lastly, I now have a new set of skills, tools, and ideas that are ready to be implemented. Thank you so much for this course. Every week there was something new to learn and something to relearn were moments of knowledge shared with my colleagues in each of their shared works. Being able to be present in the live session was a challenge because it was at the same time that I should be in class and I could only be present in the week that I had COVID. The second week was the hardest but the one I liked the most. Each article one read left me with new knowledge and an activity that I am developing with my students. Likewise, week three was another where I relearned a lot because I did not know much of the tools that I am now using with my students. Now, in each content I'm preparing, I use one or two tools learned throughout the course. All right. Uh, as you can see, that was uh, an avatar <laughs> at the end there. It wasn't uh, her voice, but it's interesting. Hi, this is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. I've got a great video for you today if you like Mentimeter. I'm going to show you some of the advanced features in Mentimeter, and I'm going to show you what it looks like for the student and for the teacher. So this is a longish video, but if you're kind of good at Mentimeter and you really want to learn some of the advanced features, then watch this video, and particularly as I come to the end, I'm going to... I have no idea how Russell got in there. But Russell and I are, actually were friends. We met a couple of years ago. And it's nice. It's nice to be able to uh, have Russell visit us. Uh, if you don't know Russell, you can look him up or I can tell you more about him. All right. So let's continue here with uh, the next slide. 
but before I, I started talking about uh, Voki and this particular student, you can read while I'm talking. The student um, is actually a student teacher, so she's trying things out. And she's right, she didn't have time because she was busy with her classes. Uh, and the only time she had was when she had COVID. Isn't that terrible? Uh, she had Omicron and that's when she had time to do some of the activities. That's, um, I guess, our lives these days. These are the weeks, the weekly tasks. Notice in week one, uh, one of the participants mentioned Novio. I don't know if you got that, but Novio, if you've never heard of it, is absolutely amazing. The link is here. So when you get the um, presentation, you'll be able to look into all of the uh, technologies the, that we used. Um, so they got to know one another using Novio. And um, of course, these are all available on the smartphone. And Voki and Kahoot. Week two, uh, we discussed the challenges and benefits of Novio as a tool. And it is, really is an amazing tool for students. Uh, they also uh, did some reading and they responded to the reading. They created Quizlet study sets. They played Quizlet study sets and they had to uh, show their uh, scores. So they, there was a competition there uh, among them as they tried to outscore each other. So there was a lot of fun. The idea, of course, is to have fun. That's what Evo uh, sessions are about, learning, collaborating, learning from each other, of course, and having fun. Week three, uh, we spend time on screen recorders. They tried out various recorders. They also used different presentations, including Canva, to create videos. So Canva is not only for images and presentations, but you can also create videos using uh, Canva on your phone. They also, the articles that they read on the value of having, um, there's lots of research out there, by the way, on the value of having, of learning from smartphones, whether in or out of the classroom. It doesn't have to be in the classroom. Uh, reading with Aminote, so they were able to take notes, and they also um, had journal reflections. That was part of uh, uh, the Moodle course, uh, and they were able to add their reflections using multimedia. They could use text, images, audio, and video in their reflections. Week four, we focused on storytelling and journal reflections using uh, Animoto Storyboard that. I got a free, okay, this is free storyboard account. Um, so I was able, as a teacher, so I was able to add all the other teachers as teachers. So they had more rights and they could use storyboard for as long as they wish. Uh, Toontastic, um, Movimi, also on the phone. They weren't too happy about that. You might want to try it though and see compared to Toontastic. And Plotagon, if you've never used Plotagon, it is absolutely amazing. I've been using it for, I guess, over 10 years. Really, really useful for students, both, um, well, right now it's mostly on the phone or on mobile devices. And Pixton Comics, uh, also another great way of um, building stories and helping students, of course. The idea, of course, is not only for the teachers to do this, but for the students to, uh, to take part in the activities. Week five was showcase and reflect, and we use curation walls. They could choose their own curation wall and their own screen recorders, so they had a lot of choice, uh, and they liked that. Reflection with a Voki at the end, and you heard some of the reflections. These were the interactive presentation slides that we used, all three. If you're not familiar with any of these, if you click on the links when you get the presentation, you'll be able to go there and try them out yourself. Slides Carnival, Nearpod, Emaze, Aha Slides, Slides Mania, Canva, Genially, and Google Slides. If you know of others, uh, feel free to share them in the chat box and we can also check them out. Uh, for the uh, curation boards, uh, they could choose from Padlet, Wakelet, Miro, Mural, Concept Board, Idea Boards, uh, Google Jam Board, Pinterest Boards, Diego, eLink, and Scoopit. Uh, the digital badges, they uh, were able to get these for each week. Video for mobile learning, 
and the final certificate with their name, not mine. And Moodle does this automatically. So if you're interested in Moodling, you have a chance to learn to Moodle from um, joining us next year or uh, in May, there's a Moodle course, course not session. If you're interested, it's completely free. Right, questions and comments. I think I did it. Uh, so we're ready for questions. A couple of minutes for questions. Feel free to uh, let's see how many people are here. Okay, so raise your hand. We can let you unmute yourself. Um, if you raise your hand, you can ask your question by voice or um, you can write it in the chat box. And Sonia, you can um, let me know. Yes, there are 39 people in uh, this session. And yeah, I everybody, can see. If, mm -hmm, if, if you would mm -hmm. like to ask a question in voice, raise your hand. There are no and hands Sonia and will... there are no questions. No You've hands. explained everything perfectly. All right, great. Okay, so hey, there is a question in the chat. How yes, can uh, register. people register hmm? for uh, for next year <laughs> or for uh, for the Moodle course? Yes, or and uh, if uh, the participants of this session can get the PowerPoint. Yes, I'm going to add that. Um, maybe I can do it right now. Let's yes, do it right you can. Now. And there is one, up. one hand up, uh, Muhammad. Okay, so can you let Muhammad give him voice so he can speak? Let me find Muhammad in the in the participants. He raised his hand, so it should be easy. Yes. And let me add the link. Oh, we're getting the. Um, no, the sound is bad. Sorry, Mohammed, we can't really hear you. We're just no, getting a I'm lot of static. Am I audible Again? now? Yes. Am I audible? Uh, yes, I just, yes, you uh, are. Thank you so much. Uh, I just uh, wanted to, I just want to confirm, Kate, uh, the resources that you were telling, telling us about, are they all bad or there are some free versions as well? Free, free. I only work with free. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, please uh, mute your mic. Thank you. Yes, anyone Can you else? Hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. Hi, I'm so glad to be Hi, here. Man. Um, you know that after COVID 19, we we had to get used to have students using technology in class, but right now we find that they are kind of addicted. To, to use their devices, you know, either cell phone, tablet, computer. So it's been hard to take them from that. But you have given us a great idea to use those, those devices that they are addicted to, to, <laughs> to have a better use in class and to improve learning, actually. So thank you so much for your ideas. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. That's the idea, of course. The idea is to get them to, if they want to be addicted to learning, you know, that's fine, right? Uh, learning is great, but that they should be using their mobile devices for productive uh, learning rather than just to, you know, roam around. But generally speaking, I would say that uh, most of our students are learning, whether, you know, we're aware of it or not. But we might want to ask them, you know, what are you learning? What did you learn? Uh, how are you using your phones? You know, get involved in, um, in what they're doing with their devices. And this way, um, you know, we might gain their trust and then it'll be easier to work with them in using their phones for learning and not for other things. So thank you for that. All right. So I think that um, I want to thank you uh, for joining this part of um, our session, and we're going to go on to the next one that I'm also um, leading. Let me go to the beginning here. And uh, this is Tools for Student Collaboration. This was also a session given on the same platform, on the Moodle platform. Let me share the link. Was the link okay, um, Sonia or anyone else? If you could just add in the chat, was the link okay for you? Were you able to open it 
the presentation link? Just say Let yes, no. I think it looks okay. It, it I looks see okay. yes. Okay. Oh, I see Cynthia's here. We missed you. All right. So Cynthia's was uh, one of the, uh, and I hope she will be next year, one of the presenters for um, the previous session. And we did, I did mention you, but I'm sorry, I didn't notice that you were here. All right, so Tools for Student Collaboration um, has been, I guess, uh, an EVO session. This is the third, third, third or, year. yeah, third yeah, year. I think it's third the third year. year. Yeah, thank you, uh, of Tools for Student Collaboration. Uh, it changes slightly. All the uh, sessions change every year. They might have the same name, but we, we change things so that, uh, you know, if you want to join again, you'll get different things. Uh, we used various tools, uh, mostly Moodle, eh, sorry, Google-based tools. Um, we use Google Drive, and these are some of the other tools that we used. Uh, the link to the session is available at the bottom there. If you click on it, when you get the uh, presentation, you'll be able to go into the session and view it. Here's more about me. You'll be able to see that. And Maria. Maria? Um, you can introduce yourself. Um, well, actually, um, I was going to introduce you <laughs> because you always oh, okay, keep so the you part. introduce me. All right, you skip go the ahead. part about yourself. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'll introduce you. Okay. Thank well, you. Um, actually, uh, not that you need any introduction because most of the people here know about you. Uh, but just for the sake of those who might not have had the chance to get to know you yet, uh, I would like to uh, point out a, a few things about Dr. Nelly Deutsch. Um, she's uh, uh, a Canadian educator who organizes online professional development for faculty members on blended and blended online learning with uh, HyFlex using Moodle and Zoom education technology and mindfulness. And her doctoral dissertation focused on blended learning in higher education. Um, the, what I wanted to point out about Dr. Nelly is that uh, she's a, a really un unconventional educator. She uh, is an expert in uh, getting teachers uh, involved in working together, uh, trying things out for themselves. And she manages to get them involved in uh, collaborative team-based learning. And when she does that, that's when small miracles begin to happen. Uh, she has um, uh, broadened our horizons and made us see, see things a lot differently. And um, I think uh, we really owe a lot to her. She's a Moodle admin and she really loves using the Moodle environment uh, to engage her learners and offer courses. That's why she manages her own server and provides Moodle support and training to Moodle admin teachers at schools. And as you can see, she has really long experience teaching English in high school and at the college level using uh, technology into her in-person programs since as early as 1992. We all know that she organizes free online events such as Moodle and virtual world MOOCs and online conferences on Moodle for teachers. Um, so in a nutshell, Dr. Nelly is a true inspiration for teachers and around the globe with her passion for education, her innovative ways of teaching and her generous offer uh, of her knowledge and expertise to all those teachers who seek uh, professional development. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Maria has been taking uh, courses and uh, EVO sessions on Moodle for Teachers, which is the Moodle platform that um, I started in 2009. 
to provide Moodle training, but it's now also professional development. Uh, and I can say that Maria is a very, very, very passionate and very, very generous educator who um, inspires with her passion. Uh, just uh, having Maria as a student, I'm not talking about as a collaborator, because as a collaborator, you were absolutely amazing, Maria, because you um, provided support for the participants and um, you really helped out. And I really appreciate that. You can see that she's from Greece, where she teaches English. By the way, she's very modest. That is her uh, number one quality. And she runs, that's not written here. And she runs a foreign language center. She holds a bachelor's degree from the national, I uh, can't pronounce that, University of Athens uh, in English studies and is a lifelong learner, truly lifelong learner, because I think that Maria, I don't know if we ever met at ITEFL or anything like that. Let me know if we have, but um, I think we've known each other for quite a few years. She's had long experience in teaching young learners and teenagers, as well as adults over 25 years. She guides them from their first steps to the highest uh, C2 proficiency level and prepares them to sit for internationally recognized exams, such as Cambridge, Michigan, NOCN, PTE, TOEIC, um, IELTS, I and so on. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes, no, you're doing, okay. No, feel free to correct. I, no. I don't know these terms because I'm yes, not. Yes, I know, I, mean, I know. I <laughs> these yeah. are specific international exams that, uh, you know, not, not, they're not, they're taken in many parts of the world, but you might not. Uh, have yeah, they're for non-native, <laughs> they're non-native yeah, non speakers. They're the ones that take them to certify their knowledge apart from acquiring fluency and developing essential 21 first century skills. And I have to say that Maria now knows how to manage her own Moodle courses uh, and um, is probably on her way to managing her own Moodle site uh, because she uh, has been practicing. She integrates technology in her teaching and use a variety of tools with her learners. So thank you once again, Maria, for being part and helping moderate and for your uh, amazing you. introduction. You, you made it all possible. <laughs> thank you. Well, it takes two to tango and uh, we're tangoing. Right? <laughs> it's a dance. Uh, there were 91 participants from 23 countries. Uh, these are the countries. I hope I haven't repeated any of them. Uh, as I said before, there could be more. These are the ones where the participants uh, added their country. Again, this is the bar. It's a progress bar where students are able to check where they stand and uh, complete the task that they need to complete. Uh, this is uh, a link to the, uh, I think we have time a little bit, to uh, let me just make sure that it's Marina and you're able to hear it. Make sure the computer sound is on. All right, here I'm we go. going to talk about the challenges and the benefits. Can you hear five weeks in the Evo session? What made me come back to Evo after the first experience was the enthusiasm I felt around me and the idea of getting an insight in the technological world. But I must confess, I fear because I'm not digitally competent or not as competent as I would like to be. So working with passionate teachers that are motivated and discussing ideas with them, sharing thoughts was amazing. Also, I had the feeling of putting myself to the test, designing and developing tasks. This is especially close to project work that we do in our classes on a daily basis. So it's a means to put ourselves in our students' shoes and better understand their difficulties. So it's a chance to get updated and strengthen our grasp of technology. On the other hand, there are so many challenges. 
Technology is not always reliable. It takes nothing for plants to go pear-shaped. And there's so much variability in hardware and software. And having somebody tech savvy to help you is really key. Thanks for listening. Hello, my name is Marv Ali. I want to first of all thank Dr. Nelly for giving me this opportunity to be part of the tool for collaboration course. I really learned a lot uh, in spite of my busy schedule and tight circumstances uh, and this, this whole bunch of resources over there and tools that I, that, I, that I wanted to practice in my class, but I couldn't. Uh, I, I would like to, you know, try and experiment each one of them in my class and see the output. Uh, I want to really thank Dr. Nelly and her team for this wonderful course and its contents. And I hope to see each uh, all the team members again sometime in the future. Thank you very much. The process of developing and designing a course collaboratively is something that needs to be well planned, with clear objectives and activities to meet the outcomes. This course has certainly provided the necessary tools to acquire the knowledge and the means to foster collaboration in the classroom. For me, the challenge has been to find the time to take advantage of the other participants' expertise through discussion forums and collaboration activities. Learning from colleagues who have a different teaching context is a plus. Another benefit is the apps, curation walls, etc., abundant and of immediate application with lots of support from tutorials and forums. The fact that we had support even if the course officially ended is something special. Thanks very much to Dr. Nelly Deutsch for this, this shows caring for her students and I will be forever grateful. It's time to reflect on the course which I have taken recently. The course is called Tools for Student Collaboration. Um, to start with, I should highlight that the course was very informative and useful for me. Uh, without uh, any hesitation, I can call this course the most practical of all that I have taken so far. So why? Actually, I liked the way how the tu tutorials are developed, how the weeks are designed. Um, I like the way how the moderators were supportive and um, provided all necessary information. Um, I really liked the, to get to know all the new um, tools. For example, Google Slides add-ons I have never um, actually used before, uh, but slides are usually uh, in my teaching uh, materials. So thank you very much. I liked everything in this course and I would recommend this course to my friends. Actually, I have already started doing it. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie. Today I'm going to share my reflection on the EVO 2022 course. Um, I really enjoyed taking this class on tools for student collaboration because I was able to learn about some new features and new tools to use in my classes. Um, in particular, I really enjoyed using uh, Book Creator. I think it's a really great tool um, to have students create their own books, magazines, newspapers, um, and just to collect uh, lots of information in one place that's easy to use. Uh, they can use uh, the pictures that are accessible and free and also add their own text and voice uh, easily in that one place. So that's one that I'm definitely going to take with me. Um, I also really enjoyed uh, the collaboration with other students in the course and getting feedback and comments and encouragement from other TESOL professionals around the world. So thank you very much. I hope that we can work together and meet each other sometime in the future. Thank you and have a great day. Hello, everybody. In my opinion, collaborative learning is the educational approach of using groups to enhance learning through working together. However, it has both benefits as well as challenges. Benefits are like it promotes learning from others' viewpoints. It teaches us how to think critically and quickly improves cooperation, etc. 
challenges include are quiet people like me may not feel comfortable. A concept may not be understood if a person doesn't have to figure it out. Hello, my name is Olga. The process of creating and designing a course is a very complicated one. You should set clear objectives to accomplish. Think of the content and tools that will help you accomplish the objectives. If you create the course collaboratively, you can delegate some of your tasks to your co-author. And as we have learned from Tools for Student Collaboration course, collaborative work always results in a better product. Now I'd like to thank Dr. Nelly Deutsch for the opportunity to participate in the course. I think all the objectives of the course have been accomplished and the participants broadened their knowledge in the field of collaborative learning and were equipped with useful tools they will take in their classrooms to their classrooms. The course is really inspiring and helps to enhance collaborative English learning in many countries as participants come from different countries. Thank you. is a uh, getting started live interactive webinar. Yes, right. Let's try to get back here to um, our session. Um, I think the participants can describe uh, the session best because they're the ones that took it. I enjoyed, I think Maria did too, we enjoyed their enthusiasm and you know, it, it's reciprocal. Um, they enjoyed what they were doing and we were enjoying their enjoyment. Uh, in week one, we got acquainted. I think I mentioned how, these are some of the outcomes. Week two, uh, we based everything on 50 debate topics. Participants worked in teams. They chose one debate topic for and against and use various tools to collaborate whether Google Docs and Kazana. If you're not familiar with Kazana, I believe these are clickable as well. Uh, and then in week three, they use Google Slides and Automatic, a way to add voice to their presentations. They also used Nearpod, they had a choice. They use screen recorders, Edpuzzle, Nearpod, and VideoEnd. They really like video and it's completely free. Of course, everything is free. And it's a way to collaborate by annotating videos, YouTube videos. So uh, video and is something that you might enjoy as well. Then week four was Google Forms. They created both research. They conducted a research on their debate topic. And they also conducted quizzes using Google Forms. In week five, they uh, summed up everything, all the work they had done in a collaborative book using Book Creator. Uh, book Creator is also completely free. And they also created a Canva group for the images so they can add them. That's week five. These are some of the interactive presentation slides that you can click on and take a look at. Uh, the digital badges this year. Okay, every year they change color and uh, other things. And the final certificate. Now we've got um, two minutes for, for one minute for questions. Are there any questions before we go on to the final uh, session of this uh, Zoom meeting? Any questions? No, there are no questions, just comments. The tools are so helpful. Okay. Yes. Oh, are there participants I'll... from the from the session? They called it course, yes, but yes. actually it's an EVA. We call it a session, even though it's a five-week course like, but it's a session. So session I would like to mention that yes. the books they created on Book Creator were really stunning. <laughs> uh, they did Worth an amazing thing. job. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, thank I, you I, for saying I, that. I, I, I was surprised to see uh, because uh, I realized that this was a new tool for most of them, but they managed to unlock its features and create pretty cool uh, ebooks. You know, that's what it's all about. You build it, you build it, and they come. It's amazing how teachers who think that they're not uh, tech savvy and, and they think they're not good enough, but 
you know, they, they prove otherwise, <laughs> yes. you know, to themselves and to us. It's just amazing that they, they do so much and so well, they, you know, they outdo us well, they outdo me because they're doing better things that I can even think of. All right. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to this session. And we're going to go on to the next one. And uh, the next one is with four uh, dear friends of mine. I mean, everybody is a friend, actually. But uh, all right. So let's get started, folks, with uh, teaching FL to young learners. This is our seventh anniversary. So you can clap. Uh, we appreciate it. It's uh, been seven years. Actually, uh, teaching at Faulty Young Learners started before that with ITEFL. Uh, and I was part of it since I was in the committee in ITEFL in uh, 2015. But um, ITEFL and I parted and um, we continued with uh, these presenters. All right. So you know about me from Maria. And um, Cheryl uh, McCoy from the United States. Um, you can read about her as we go through the slides. I'll add the link to uh, the slides so that you can also uh, click on the links as we go, if that helps. Okay, so here's the link, unless someone has already added it. I will be adding it. Nevis, did I? Uh... There, was I first? Okay, so that's uh, Cheryl, and uh, Cheryl was uh, involved in week one. We each led a week. I was week one. Uh, Cheryl was week two. Nevis, who's coming to us from Italy right now, but she's originally from Australia. You can read about her there. And our fourth presenter. And I think my it's stuck. There we are. Is Judy Wong, who's coming to us from the United States. And you can read about Judy. Okay, we had 128 participants from 24 countries, uh, probably more, but these are the countries that were indicated people wrote their countries. Uh, 10 participants out of the 128 completed all the activities. And these are some of the reflections. Hi, everybody. This course has been a great experience, an enjoyable journey across a variety of teaching ideas and diverse perspectives. It uh, provided uh, me with the opportunity to discover and try new tools such as Wakelet uh, and Boki and uh, create products uh, such as board games, uh, reflect upon teaching challenges, receive uh, valuable feedback from our trainers uh, and uh, my colleagues, uh, the other participants uh, uh, of the course. And uh, I got a lot of advice uh, and help from uh, our trainers. Uh, and I, uh, I'm going to, uh, to implement uh, the ideas that, uh, I collected uh, into my classrooms. Uh, thank you so much. And this EVO course was learning how to use screen recorder. Um, I've used some in the past, but they were never um, super helpful. But it was super easy to use Vimeo, and so I'm really glad I know how to do that. Um, it was also great to learn more about Voki and Wakelet and just know how to organize all my materials in the future. Um, and so I really think that Wakelet is something that I'll use a lot. Um, just organizing um, different materials I find and as I find them, adding them and being able to go look back in one spot will just be really, really helpful. Um, I also learned hearing about different educators around the world and just being able to interact with others. Um, I thought that was really special. Um, one thing I kind of did expect a little bit more was to have more technology use. I feel like the very beginning, um, we were really technology heavy with Kahoot and um, and Wakelet and Voki, and I just kind of expected the rest of it to be like that. 
um, which was not a problem. I still learned a lot through, um, you know, upcycling and just like reading stories online. That was helpful. But um, I guess I did kind of expect to, to have a few more resources. But overall, like I was really thankful for this opportunity and feel like I've taken a lot of um, resources away with me and a lot of skills that will help me become a better teacher. Hello, this is Jorge. And I want to talk a little bit about the challenges and uh, benefits that I had during this course. Well, about the challenges, one thing that I found a little bit challenging was to manage to complete all the tasks. In, I have to do things for work and studies. It was a bit challenging to do it, but at the end, I managed to complete all of that. Um, Another thing is that I was exposed to new links, new apps, and it was a little bit challenging to get used to them, but at the end, I could get acquainted that I knew how to use them. But that all was really good because I learned new things that I didn't know before because I don't have a lot of experience in teaching your learner. So it was a very good experience for that. I could learn about board games, how readings can help a lot, how I can make my classes more fun and more enjoyable for my students. Apart from that, I learned about upcycling, which I'm sure I will implement and it will be really good. And I learned a lot about new tools and the strategies to implement during my classes. Hello, it's Christina. Uh, I can't say that I've had some challenges or difficulties or problems in the course. Maybe the challenge was the creation. By the way, I just wanted to say that this participant spoke so quietly because she just had a baby and the baby was, everybody was sleeping and it was the only time that she could speak and that's why she was whispering. Wall and screen recorder, I used them, but I wanted to use some new ones, so I had to explore. Time was also the challenge because of the family obligations and work and everything. I sometimes didn't have time, but I did all the tasks. The benefits are that I started using Vimeo as screen recorder, which automatically saves everything. Uh, I became aware of upcycling and use of materials in English classroom. Now I'll use it more to teach ecology. I found a way to create online games and I found that website actually uh, uh, Nives shared it with us and uh, I learned that I su should share not just read stories to my students and Judy really gave us a list of books that we can use so I got a lot of benefits and no let's say challenges problems or difficulties. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back before we get, there we are. All right, so the weekly tasks, you can see weeks one, the introduction, week two, week three, four, and five. A little bit about that, you'll be able to view this um, a little better uh, once you see the uh, presentation. Uh, let's go on with um, the weeks. Week one, um, these are some of the images. On the left, you can see the introduction with a Padlet using uh, the map. If you've never used Padlet and the map, uh, try it out. You'll be able to get the link. All the links are available in the presentation. We also used Kahoot participants introduce themselves with the Kahoot and as an assignment which means that you can play the Kahoot at any time or at least within uh, the session. It's usually one month or 30 days, something like that. And it was a lot of fun to try to play and, and get guess um, information about the participants. Of course, the images had to uh, be suitable so that they could guess correctly. So they had to think critically. And I do this with my students too, of adding images that actually gave away the answer. And then Voki, you saw some of the Voki, uh, the Voki introductions are there. All right, week two with Cheryl McCoy. Cheryl?
Yes, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I got into this class as a participant when we were working with, and, and uh, one of the, the leader was working with the refugees and how to make learning things from whatever you had at hand. And that's where I went from there. But as I progressed, I could see that I, I teach high school, I teach elementary school, I have training in kindergarten less, but people will not know anything if you have not trained them up when they're little. So using the upcycling is a marvelous way to get little kids to start imagining, thinking, growing, and learning English and their home language. Okay, so they're doing both because they're so little, they're learning everything. So you can mesh them at the perfect opportunity to do that. And then for older kids, I focus on material science and more learning of, of English. So upcycling is something my family's done since I was a little kid. My grandmother taught us how to do that. I won't tell you how long ago that was, but it's just a part of, of many people still, even though it looks like we're not, we've given it up. So I like it because you can make a makerspace lesson. You could have spiral curriculum and you need that so desperately. And then uh, we talk about research about teaching and using technology. And I did understand that some people, I, I just got that misconception thing and I'm like, okay, I'll address that. But thank you so much for being here today. I have great partners and I'm going to let them go ahead and tell their story. Back to you, Nelly. Or over to Nevis. Calling Nevis. Nevis is Nevis in Okay, the house? here we go. Oh. oh, hi, Nevis. We just need to see you. I, I awesome. couldn't. I couldn't unmute myself. I can't undo the camera either. But anyway, I'm here. Uh, I've, okay, I'm where did you now? <laughs> I forgot about the camera. Oh. I'm sorry, <laughs> okay. Nevis. It's it's my fault. Let me make you a comod. I guess uh, I missed you. All um, right, no there. worries. Okay, now you can turn on your camera, and you're all good to know. Here we go. go. I'm here. We are. Okay, perfect. All right. So week three is all about understanding how to use board games as a language learning tool in the classroom, and. Um, there was a lot of reading to do uh, in my week and some discussion in the forum. But what I tried to do, because normally every year we do a lot of reading and then we discuss the reading. This year I tried to get the participants to maybe choose one or two to actually read and discuss rather than all of the reading, although they could have all the reading that they wanted to because they could just download everything or keep the links to everything, which was really good. I created a wakelet where they could go and put their stuff on the wall and which was really handy as well. And it, it's an easy place and they were used to, by the time they got to week three, they'd already tried it in week one with Dr. Nelly, so it worked really well. Um, and it was really exciting to see some of the um, comments that were happening in the discussion panel and how everyone was interreacting to each other. The other important thing was that we also uh, shared some uh, digital uh, board games as well, so that some of those teachers that are still in lockdown mode or have to still do um, distance learning or distance teaching could also use the digital uh, templates that we put up on the, in the um, week three and week three was just as fun as it's always been the last few years that I've been doing this week. Um, I look forward to the, the participants every year. We have a wonderful session. So what can I say? It's really been enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nevis. Yeah, after doing it for so many years and collaborating, it's like, you know, we're family. So, um, you know, it's, it's, we take each other for granted, maybe too much. So I really want to thank my uh, co-moderators and Judy for week four. Ah, week four. 
So I decided to this year, um, last year I had tried out actually putting people live into rooms um, because it dawned on me that, you know, everybody's online and that was the hardest thing for them with dealing with reading. And so it wasn't enough just to teach them how to do it in a classroom if they can't be in a classroom. So, <laughs> so this year it was pretty much hands-on. Um, very interactive and we played we learned how to do different types of introductions to um, get our students to stop looking at their phone when they go online and uh, we worked with the tool the zoom tool which most people are terrified of but we learned how it's just another tool just like a whiteboard is a new tool and and there are ways to play with it and you know we we uh, we practiced and played with the different tools and the different ways we can use this tool to make it more interactive so that our students um, are really sharing in an experience and not just sitting there watching a bunch of people talk at them. Um, but I thought that they had a lot of fun and everybody seemed to really, really like it. And I made sessions. I ended up making like four sessions because I worked with everybody's different time zones, so that was cool. <laughs> yeah, they really loved it. Thank you, Judy. All right, these were some of the interactive presentation slides that we used in week five. And uh, to showcase, uh, they used screen recorders to showcase, and they used uh, Vokey to reflect. These are some of the curation boards. They, they're mostly the same. And these are this year's, these were this year's weekly digital badges. So I said, we, we change things. We not only change the badges and of course the certificates uh, change slightly, but um, we change um, the tools and how we do things. So um, I think it's always different and you're welcome to join us. And I hope you will next year teaching EFL to young learners. You'll also be able to read some of the um, feedback. We received feedback both uh, by text and through Vokey. Uh, there were two ways and these are some of them. And uh, questions and comments. I don't know how much time we have. Oh, we've got, wow, that's good. We've got four minutes. So um, if you raise your hand, we'll give you voice so you can ask uh, your questions or add your comments or you can add them in the chat and Sonia can read them. Yes, there are no questions, just a comment that the, the pupils are really lucky to have teachers like you. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> We're all teachers. And you're right? a wonderful team. That's, yes, I agree. Uh, we are quite a team, um, and uh, and yes, we are going places, right, Judy? And uh, Cheryl and Nevis uh, do a lot of things together, um, right, Nevis and Cheryl, beyond. And actually, um, you know, we just met online. But uh, that's how it happens. You meet online in these Evo sessions, and then you start working together. If you live in different countries, then you work on different projects, and um, you also uh, have your own sessions and other projects, sometimes write books, uh, maybe go to conferences together. So uh, Evo is a wonderful stepping stone to um, get to learn teachers from around the globe. Go ahead, Cheryl, you have the floor. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we have all, I must have a weird idea about online because I really feel like I know everybody. I mean, I can imagine what Nellie's yard looks like or house or whatever. And I know Nevis and I, we share pictures, so that's easier. But Judy, I have this idea what your flat looks like, you know, your apartment. And I mean, I could actually visualize myself in these places. And that's what we want to do with online. It's like with Doris Molero, you know, I, the first time I met her, she was saving me from being trapped in Second Life. <laughs> I was the first time I'd ever been there and I couldn't move. And I got stuck in a corner and she just 
we'll do this. And then boom, I was out, you know? So Cheryl, just a second. I just want to invite everybody to uh, open their videos. Judy, this is your line. That's right. That's it, everybody. Open your videos. Ah, there you are, Cynthia and Maria. Feel free to open up so we can see you. Go ahead, Cheryl. Sorry about that. Yes, and we'd like for all of you to be our friends. Some were friends accidentally, and then on purpose, it's like, oh my gosh, this person is really awesome. <laughs> and then some of them were, were together because we have a, a, a core need or want together. And it's just wonderful because over time, we get to know each other. And it's like, I really, I don't know. It's like reading a yes. book. You know how you read a you book? Know that, Cheryl, we've known each other since 2000. And I don't know what. With, with or Cooper something, or four or five, I don't know. <laughs> Tell, what was it called? Something or other. And I was just talking to Doris. You know, we, we have this telepathy. We've known each other since 2004. Uh, online, we've never met. Uh, well, yes. Judy, I know. <laughs> Whenever I am with Nelly in, in a session with her, I, I can talk. I become into a parrot. When, when I'm not with Nelly, I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, you're I, you're I shy. Know all of you. Yes, you know. Yes. But we are, I mean, when I'm with you guys, it's like, this is family. So it's like, okay, you take me the way I am. I don't have to be like perfect or anything, you know. I, it's you are if, you perfect. Know, I love you all. <laughs> but you know, like Nevis, I mean, she is, I really know what Fabriano looks like and she will describe it or tell about it. I, her sister has this really cool farm up in the mountains and I'm like, oh, wow, I could visualize that. And then now she's in a different town and or city. And that's what we share with each other also, you know. All right, everyone. Our time is up. So uh, what's left to do is to get a photo of yep. everyone. Please, please so join us. Open next up your year. cameras. As open up your cameras. Or yes, or put yourself, teacher. Natalia, uh, so we could see you. If you've got a camera, um, I don't know how many pages do we have here. Just one. Uh, who's our photographer, Judy? <laughs> Uh, okay, whoever's the photographer, Hi, Doris is our photographer. Let's Cynthia, see. we've got lots of photographers. Yes. So smile, <laughs> peace for peace is a peace. Yes, we say peace <laughs> and love. Yes. <laughs> so one, two, three, todos. A ver, say peace. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Cheese, okay. Uh, when I was a <laughs> kindergarten teacher, we used to have the kids say monkey. Oh, oh that's a good one. Too. Okay, monkey. That's a good one. Okay, <laughs> let's say monkey, perfect. everybody. Okay, one, one two, two, three. three. Monkey. 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 <laughs> that's perfect. Okay. Good for you, Cheryl. All right, see you next. Uh, <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye. Miss you guys. Besitos, besitos, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>